This is the murder wedge. It easily plows through most vehicles, but can it plow through a T-Series? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today, we're gonna be taking a look at some automation mods. Now, normally I try to do one mod per video. The problem with that is sometimes you have a mod that's interesting, but not interesting enough to take up a whole video. So today, I just downloaded a bunch of automation mods that look interesting, and we're gonna go through them and mess around with them. The first one is the 1998 Suzuki Samurai, and it's a totally ordinary, 100% stock Suzuki Samurai. This is what they came from the factory looking like. Nothing abnormal here. And yes, in America, they came with a slightly bigger engine than the European versions. Okay, really, this is based off of a custom car that's made for doing burnouts, and well, it works great for that. We can do burnouts all day with this thing, and we don't even need to use the nitrous. Now here's something that's really funny about this car though. So we can actually get into a crash, have the engine fall off, and keep going. There you go, there goes part of the engine, and we are still fine to drive. We can get more of the engine to fall off too if we crash it, right? Come on engine, get out of here. There we go. So more of the engine has fallen off, and that's still okay. The problem is, is I got no steering. So the only part of the engine that actually matters is the part that's in it right now, which is Still a very, very big engine, while the other parts on top are basically just fake plastic bits that look cool, but they do absolutely nothing except block your vision, and if you try to use the hood camera, you're literally inside the engine and you can't see nothing. So there's a real benefit to destroying your engine. You get to actually see where you're going with no loss of performance, as strange as that sounds, and oh, that was a big crash. Very fast and uh, apparently also very spiky. Now, we're going on to the next vehicle. Yeah, we're only gonna do the vehicles for a couple minutes each. That's why we have so many. This one is the go-kart. It's just an ordinary looking go-kart, nothing too fancy about it. Well, actually, it looks a little more basic than most because it's just a couple of metal bars welded together. But it works as a go-kart, and the impressive thing about it is how fast it can go. So you look at this thing, how fast it can go? Like, 30 miles per hour? <laughs> Try over 100 miles per hour. This thing is not a go-kart. It's a death cart. This thing, you will die driving it because we're going 140 miles per hour and it just keeps pulling 150 miles per hour, not looking at where I'm going, driving up the wall and completely destroying the go-kart in the process. If there was a driver on this thing, their best bet is probably being chucked out of it and hoping for the best. And the funny thing is, is we could have actually gone quite a bit faster than that. In fact, if we had a long enough of a straightaway, we could have exceeded 200 miles per hour in this thing. I don't know why it's so fast. There's no reason for it to be this fast. It just is. So going along this straightaway, hopefully we'll get close to 200 miles per hour if I can keep control over it. Every little bump can really disrupt it because it's a go-kart. Do you see any suspension on those rear wheels? Yeah, there's barely any travel, so it's very easy for you to lose control. But we're going about 170 miles per hour before we start hitting the wall. And we're done. We just gotta watch it crash now. Flipping around, bouncing off the railing, just complete chaos as it comes to a stop. And that's what happens when you crash a go-kart at over 170 miles per hour. For driving as fast as we were, it held its shape great. Next up, we got a golf cart. It's just a pretty ordinary golf cart, but I thought it was neat that you can make a golf cart in automation. Although it does have a wing and then also the engine is just <laughs> <laughs> the engine, yeah, the, don't worry about the fact that the engine is sticking out the front. That is perfectly normal for American golf carts. They all come pre-installed with a 6 liter V8 engine. A ginormous wing of freedom is also normal on the golf carts. A lot of time you don't see it because they'll accidentally bump a wall and it just falls off. And that's why they're called freedom wings because when you crash they get freedom and they're gone forever. And that has broken the main engine, which makes sense. There's nothing protecting it, so it's probably pretty easy to destroy, and it's all off-center now. So we'll go ahead and reset it and try to drive a little bit more. And the funny thing is, is just like the go-kart, yeah, this thing can go over 200 miles per hour if you have a long enough of a straightaway. That is, of course, assuming we can control it. With it being such a small vehicle, it gets very unstable at high speeds. Just 160 miles per hour is already pretty unstable. You see it kind of just wiggling all over the place, but here we go, 190 and 200 miles per hour, trying to go around the corner at 215 miles per hour, impact into the wall, and this thing is just gonna come to a stop, hopefully without too much damage, but a lot of spinning going on here. And surprisingly, the engine still works and we can still accelerate. That's shocking for crashes that were literally at over 200 miles per hour. It kind of works. 
not really good. So let's go ahead and reset it and then keep on driving down this road a little bit more and do one more crash. This time we're going to intentionally crash into the wall a little bit harder and see if anything interesting happens. So here we go, 160 miles per hour on impact or so. Boom! Whoa! <laughs> what? Wow, okay. Well, <laughs> the engine has completely fallen out. Let's not do that anymore with the golf cart because that's a bad thing. All right, back over to here. And what do we got after the golf cart? Well, we have something that's not crazy fast. This is just more impressive. It's just a fire truck. Literally, it's just a normal fire truck. It is normal fire truck performance, but it looks cool. And if you asked me to try to make a fire truck in automation, it would not look nearly this good. It would end up looking like a double decker bus made out of scrap metal and dog poop. I have no idea how somebody goes and creates something like this, but it's cool. I guess it's also technically faster than a normal fire truck because it keeps accelerating for a while, but the initial acceleration, it definitely feels like a fire truck should. And then we can also turn on the lights and it has all kinds of lights all over the place to turn on, which is kind of funny. And you know what might be fun to do? Is if we spawn up some traffic and crash into them with this thing, because it's big and heavy, so it should be able to plow through traffic in a pretty fun way. So we're spawning up just normal, ordinary traffic, and that's the first time ever I've spawned up traffic while moving, I think, and I guess it works. Usually I do it while I'm immobile, because I assumed I would just smash into them immediately, but when you're driving, they spawn up behind you, which is kind of nice. One of those things I never knew. All right, so here we go. Smashing into this car. Can we keep on driving? Oh, yeah, that is good. Fire truck, big, heavy, strong. Keep pushing through them, and it's working just about as you'd expect. I really like this. It's... Not a super crazy mod like the last few. It's just a very solid fire truck, which is so bright. I can't see anything. When you look forward, it's like looking directly into the sun. And it looks less right now because I crashed a little bit. So hold on a sec. We're resetting this, turning all the lights back on. <laughs> it's so bright. Why is it so bright? Oh my goodness. Okay. I gotta take a breath after that, like, okay. 99% of the time when I'm laughing in a video, that's because it's scripted. That's one of the few times where it just got me off guard and I didn't know how to react. So back to doing normal fire truck stuff, which means smashing into cars going the wrong way on the road. I don't know exactly what fire trucks do normally, unfortunately, but I'm assuming it's something like this. And we're getting up to speed pretty good. Once we pass about 60 miles per hour, that is ramming speed. So we find a car, there's a little pickle, and it's smashing into him at 69 miles per hour. Nice. And we're just shoving him along. Poor guy never stood a chance, and he really didn't stand a chance in that smashing. He has been smushed bad. You didn't deserve that. There's a good possibility that fire trucks don't actually drive the wrong way on the road. All right, next up, since we already got all the traffic out here, let's go with another guy who works great with traffic. This is the Murder Wedge. And apparently they're just as big as the fire truck, so we gotta do a little bit of maneuvering and we are free. So what do you do with a Murder Wedge? This. It drives right into the cars and flings them into the air most of the time. So we're gonna try to do this again. We got some cars right in front of us, smacking into them. And sometimes, yeah, that does happen. You get stuck on the vehicle and they will spin you out, unfortunately. And then also it gets damaged and that's why cars can't fit under it properly anymore. So you reset it and then you go for another run. And if I did that dumb thing where I put a random clip at the start of the video, I would be like, this is the murder wedge. It easily plows through most vehicles, but can it plow through a T-Series? Find out in this video. And the answer to that is not really. T-Series kind of heavy, ain't it? That's one of those things I honestly wasn't sure what was going to happen. All right, now let's go the opposite direction of traffic We've got a fresh murder wedge and we are off gaining a lot of speed really really fast over 100 miles per hour and then boom boom oh t-series you are so big but i actually was heavier and stronger than them because i pushed them out of the way although to be fair i was going quite a bit faster than them which definitely helped the murder wedge was feeling weird so we got a new one and we're gonna crash some more. I like the acceleration on this thing, 130 miles per hour, and it just flings the cars out of the way. And we are not gonna hit another T-Series, but we're also not gonna remain in control. 
You guys see the engine every now and then, it sticks out. There is an engine in this thing, and it's just the basic automation engine that's hidden by the wedge. So here we go, wedging, wedging, oh. All right, the pickle is stuck, and he's slowing me down quite a bit, but I have an idea. We're gonna push the pickle into another pickle, and he'll push him off, or we'll just have a big, fat pile of cars that we push along. Either way, Murder Wedge has a lot of power going into it to be able to push this many cars. It's just unfortunate they're not going upwards. So I have a very easy solution. I'm going to give it a couple more seconds for something to happen and nothing's happening, so we reset the vehicle, and when we do that, the vehicles keep going, and I got a fresh Murder Wedge that can go back to smacking. And that time we actually flipped them up and also flipped myself going in the wrong direction. Murder Wedge, go the correct direction and do some more smack. And here we go. Yes, into the air. Not another T-Series. That is the one thing that will stop the Murder Wedge almost every time, it seems like, unfortunately. So, new one. Keep on going. Because I'm having fun using this thing. It's just ridiculous. We're going to try to squeeze by the T-Series. Just barely fitting. Got some damage to the Murder Wedge. And we got some cars coming up. 150 miles per hour. Fly. Well, he didn't fly probably because I got damage on the T-Series. But we did some damage to him for sure. All right, Wedge, you have successfully completed your job of just destroying anything and everything that was in your path. So now let's go and go to the next vehicle. This is called Cartoon Car. And this is basically me. Anytime I try to make a car in automation and I have no idea what I'm doing, it's like, yeah, let's just make the pieces ginormous. The best part about ginormous pieces is when they fall off. They just leave a giant mirror sitting in the middle of the road. and We just drive off from it. That's fine. The base of this thing kind of looks like a Corvette because of that white side, but everything else is just chaos. Like we have a giant wing, have a giant wing, have a giant mirror. There go all of the giant parts and that looks slightly more like an ordinary car. Very slightly. Get a new one. And let's actually obey the rules of the law and drive the correct way on the road like we're supposed to. Which is harder than you'd expect because this thing is surprisingly bulky and difficult to maneuver without crashing into the edges. Alright. And one thing that's nice about the mirrors is you can really see what the cars behind you are doing. <laughs> Literally, about what? An eighth of the screen is dedicated just to looking behind me. That's great. I right, swerved through traffic. And that was probably a little too close to traffic, but we did make it through. And we have one mirror left, and it's like we have a monocle. So it's a very classy car, yes, with these very classy monocles. Monocle's gone. And there we go. Crazy car, crazy broke. Good damage, though. Next up we have Cartoon Car V3, which I always want to call Crazy Car because Crazy Car sounds cooler than Cartoon Car. What happened to Cartoon Car V2? I don't know, I didn't install that one. It didn't look as cool as number one and three. And we've already lost half of the pieces attached to the car. That's fine because look how fast this thing is. Not that fast. It's very average performance. Also, for some reason the engine's completely silent. Don't know why. Don't really care because the engine still gets us up to 125 miles per hour before I smash into that guy and then crash into the rest of them. And just as you would expect, Cartoon Car aka Crazy Car has been completely destroyed. Yeah, not much more to do with those ones besides, wow, those look wacky, don't they? Next up we have one that looks even more wacky. This one actually is so wacky it's kind of impressive. It's also so wacky it takes a long time to load. So what does it have on top of it? Yes. It has anything and everything you would ever want. It has like a laser beam on the rear. It has, it looks like saw blades on the back, but they're actually like gears from something. It looks like a bike gear on it. I have absolutely no idea what's going on with this thing, but it drives and it has a beautiful color scheme. So let's go. Who are we gonna wreck? Who are we gonna wreck? Boom. It's actually also surprisingly heavy. So it's good at smashing through cars. I guess it's really not surprisingly heavy. You look at this thing, it has so much junk on it. You kind of assume it would be heavy. Oh, it's top heavy, I should say. Not just heavy, it's top heavy. And we're stuck on our side. And it really looks like the car wants to get back onto its wheels, doesn't it? The way it bounces around, but I just don't think it's going to happen. So we just reset it, and then we're ready for the next round. And on this round, why don't we try going around a curve, which it actually works perfectly fine for, believe it or not. No, Bolide, you need to get out of the way. Oh, well, oh, I almost made it over them because this thing does got some ground clearance to it, as you see, look at this thing. That's got ground clearance. It can climb, but not quite over the Bolide in that situation. So let's try to follow the rules of the road once more, but this way is a little bit easier. We just do another 180 maneuver, have half the pieces fall off for some reason, just doing simple braking, and then 
Reset it so all the pieces are back on and then go, go, go. I'm actually kind of curious. Will those pieces that fall off almost immediately just fall off with regular driving without doing anything crazy or insane? It looks like they're staying on. All right, that's good. Use the laser beam cannon in the rear. Why does it have a laser beam cannon? Who knows? All right, we're going 100 miles per hour in first gear. Don't know why, don't know how. That's just what the car does. Oh, there's no way to fit through here. We're going to wreck them. And we are on our wheels. And still driving, maybe? No, we're just a little bit stuck inside of the truck. And the engine is off. Well, when the engine goes off, wait a minute. I think I figured out why the engine is off. Oh, that's just a fake engine bit. The real engine's still there somewhere. Where are you at, real engine? I don't even know if this thing's a mid-engine, front engine. Oh my goodness, it has an interior with snowmen. Look at that. There's snowmen inside of it. Why? Also, maybe there's the real engine? I don't know, because why is the transmission way up there? No, is this the real engine? I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Like, there's engines somewhere. There's engine everywhere. What a weird car. Okay, next, we got the e-bike dragster. This one's a much more ordinary and normal thing. I say much more because that thing was whacked. At least this is something that exists in real life. So it's a drag bike, and unfortunately, it's kind of hard to keep it upright. So why don't we go to a map that's perfectly suited for using something like the drag bike, and that would be West Coast USA at the drag strip. And of course, if we're at the drag strip, we gotta do an actual drag race. So why don't we just go ahead and race a blue buck? That sounds perfect. And the only concern I have here is can we easily stage the bike? So let's see, just rolling on up. That was easy, okay. And then we floor it as hard as we possibly can and do not let up. Just got to keep this thing going straight, and it should have a really good time at over 200 miles per hour. It was 8 seconds at 211. That's a pretty fast time. And we hit the end at about 300 miles per hour and go for a massive flight. In fact, we might almost make it to the water if we bounce right, which unfortunately we didn't. We bounced too vertical. We needed to bounce more side to side to get past these trees. Instead, we just kind of get stuck up in them, although we do clip right through them. But still, there we are, crashing into the ground. And there's a look at the damage. The middle section held up surprisingly well. Everything around it, well, it got destroyed. So back over here, we have another vehicle that's very similar to this. It's the e-bike dragster, which is the exact same name as the one we were driving. But this one's a trike instead. Does that make it faster or slower? We're going to find out. The only thing that sucks about the trike is if you try to go as fast as possible by flooring it, you're probably not going to have a good time because you're going to do something like this. You go fast, 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 and before you know it, you're upside down in the wrong lane, disqualified. You're not going to get a good time doing that. So we have to be pretty careful with the throttle inputs, maybe even more careful than a regular drag car because this thing does not have any sort of wheelie bar on it. It just flips backwards if you throttle too hard. But really, all you should be hearing from this is if it can flip backwards, it should have more power, right? Let's see, trying to be careful, and then here we can really get on the power, and look at that acceleration. Oh, I think that was going faster than the bike, wasn't it? Ooh, that was a lot faster. We're going 255 miles per hour at the end of the quarter mile, and we're still accelerating once again to hit 330 at the end, and we're gonna fly even farther than last time, probably, because we were going about 20 to 30 miles per hour more. Now, we're gonna end up in basically the same spot and after it crashes you genuinely can't tell them apart they look basically identical so one more time we're going to bring it back over to the drag strip and we are done with the drag races and the final vehicle we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the hrs 3100t what a weird name but what a cute little dump truck we get it has this super short wheelbase and it just looks adorable but also pretty beefy at the same time and one thing that's really cool about this guy is if you floor it you will pop a big fat wheelie and that's not just because i'm on the drag strip that'll happen on just about any paved terrain it's really great at doing that unfortunately you can't steer while you're in the air it doesn't have rear steering and the other fun thing is, if you're on a really grippy terrain, like the drag strip here, and then you go full speed and slam on your brakes, you can do a front flip like so. Well, a multiple front flip that actually just ruins the vehicle. <laughs> but it's fun and amusing to look at. Now that is just because we're on a very, very tacky surface. If we get to a normal driving surface, it won't do a crazy front flip like that. Anyways, with this guy, there are two questions you gotta answer. Number one, can it haul big rocks? And number two, what happens if you drive over some cars with it? 
So let's go ahead and test out the cars things first by just spawning up some traffic to mess around with. Okay, where are all the cars hiding? Apparently they decided not to be there. They're all at the drag strip. Teleport me back. Oh, well, that didn't work. I'm inside of the car. I'm supposed to be on top of the car. There's a small difference there. All right, so here we go. We are ready to see. Can the dumper climb onto some cars? First up. We got a little Burnside Arrow Coupe. Here we go. Oh, no. Well, he's bigger and stronger than a car. As for climbing over them, it's not the prettiest thing, but it does work. Here's another opportunity. Go, go, go. Oh, we got this. We got this. Oh, yes. So it can just barely make it over cars. and Well, sometimes they get stuck to the butt. I don't know how that happened, but now it's not stuck anymore. All right, we're going to do a high-speed collision with a car, hopefully. We just got to find a car that's actually moving. All those guys are just parked there. What is that? Is that a T-Series way down there, or is that just a regular car? That is a T-Series. Oh, where are you going? No, 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 no. We're supposed to crash. Okay, let's find some different AI to crash into. This is a nice long straightaway, so they should be around here somewhere, right? Okay, seriously, now, where are all the AI cars? They just have all vanished for some reason. Oh, there they are, just all lined up. Okay, I think the AI got busted because I tried to use them when I was in the middle of a drag race. Things I've never done before that I didn't know would break things. Well, the good news is we could at least try rolling on over them. That's at least something we can do with the dumper. Okay, well, we have flipped over, but you can see how big the engine is. That is a long engine. You can get it back up right there and keep driving a little bit more. I don't know what in the world the AI has decided to do, so I'm going to just say reset everybody and see if that helps them at all. Are you going to actually drive now, or do I just got to crush? They're just completely confused, so you know what? Y'all stay being confused and dumb, okay? I don't need you guys, because what I need to do is I need to test what happens when you put some rocks in this thing. So we're going to get the rock stack and put it in because actually the big rocks, they're way too big. We need to use just small rocks for now. And even that can be a little bit iffy as all the weight goes right to the rear. So what happens with all the weights on the rear? Well, you just instantly pop wheelies. You can kind of shove the weight forward a little bit, but even then, it still loves to pop wheelies with weight in the back. Because even when the weight's at the very, very front of the trailer, that's just centered on the wheelbase, basically. And that means there's still a lot of the weight behind the wheels. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys would like to see more of a similar type of video where we just go and mess around with other automation vehicles, do leave a comment so I know because this is one of those videos that's a little bit different than usual. But until next time, this is YBR, And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how strange the mods are. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.